Thank you. This is called Sleep Notes. The list began after our first attempt. Me and Dad were in the car, and he was trying to explain to me why my mother didn't want to live anymore. I remember asking lots of questions, because eventually he told me to shut up, turn the radio on, and smoke with the window down. At the hospital, Mum saw me and said, not him. And so I sat in the corridor next to an old couple who gave me a carton of juice and some chocolate from the scene. Dad was in with, with her for ages, and then when he came out, he stood with his arms folded whilst the doctor talked to him. He looked at me for a second, and then he went back to staring at the floor. After a bit, he shook his head and walked away, and the doctor came over and squatted in front of me and told me that Dad was just going to get some fresh air and he'd be back in a minute, even though he wasn't. The doctor smiled at me and asked if I wanted anything, but I said no because I'd been bought some chocolate and juice from the machines. Although that's when I had the idea. I didn't do anything until later when Mum was back home. In those days, Dad had a room with all his records in, and he'd sit in his big chair and smoke with the windows closed. Usually he'd play the records out loud, but sometimes, especially during this time, he would put his head in between those huge headphones and sit with his eyes closed. Sometimes, if I felt brave, I'd creep in and watch the back of his head. It was around this time that I started the list. I believed that my mum was surrounded by things that would make her really happy, but that she'd stop noticing them. I began to write down everything that was wonderful about the world. After much deliberation, I decided my list should be presented in no particular order. There was no way of saying that. For example, walking barefoot on hot sand was any better than Nina Simone's voice. Also, being only six, the list was largely composed of things I thought were really good, and not things that my mum would necessarily agree with. Number one, ice cream. Number two, staying up past your bedtime and being allowed to watch TV. Number three, Christmas. Number four, people falling over. Number five, banana slides. Number six, water fights. Number seven, things with stripes. Number eight, ladybirds. I kept the list in my pocket and added things as they occurred to me. Eventually, when the list was eight pages long and had 315 things on it, I left it on my mum's pillow with the title, Every Brilliant Thing. She never mentioned it to me, but I know she read it because she'd corrected my spelling. <laughs> I forgot about the list until her second attempt ten years later. As a teenager, I dealt with it less well. I wore my heart on my sleeve. I remember the day she came back from the hospital, sitting at the table staring into space and saying that she would be dead if it hadn't been for the ham and pineapple pizza lining her stomach from the night before. I remember saying to her, You took three days' worth of antidepressants, a whole blister pack of contraceptive pills, four Nurofen and half a tub of vitamin tablets. You're probably healthier than I am. If you're going to kill yourself, try jumping off a bridge. Rather than storm off, I sat there and started to shovel food into my mouth. I'd spent hours on this meal and I was furious that she was sat there in front of us both, wishing she was dead and letting it go cold. And then the most remarkable thing happened. She laughed. It was such a genuine laugh. And it went on for ages. After a while, I found myself joining in. It was my dad who got up and walked away, going into his room to listen to records. That night, I carried on with the list. 316 Kung Fu movies, 317 Weetabix, 318 Bicycles, 319 Old People Holding Hands, 320 Burning Things, 321 Laughing So Hard You Shoot Milk Out Of Your Nose. <laughs> 322, making up after an argument. 323, telescopes. 324, roller coasters. For a few weeks, I followed my mother around, reading the list to her. I would leave messages on the answer phone. I would turn off the radio or stand in front of the TV. I spent a long time talking to her back. 516, winning something. 517, starting a new book. The list evolved. It soon became my aim to reach a thousand. I wasn't allowed to cheat, which meant A. No repetition. B. Things had to be genuinely wonderful and life-affirming. And C. Not too many material items. 
For a few months, the list became my sole focus. 761, fresh air. 762, gifts that you actually want and didn't ask for. By the time summer came around, I was approaching my target. 822, electricity. 823, people who can't sing but either don't know or don't care. Then, in one push, 991, construction cranes. 992, the moon. 993, dreams of flying. 994, the rainforest. 995, falling in love. 996, sex. 997, art. 998, chocolate. 999, staying up all night talking. 1,000, waking up late with someone. 